Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy. We exalt his amazing name. We honor him because there is none like him. None. He's Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's our everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords. He's holy, holy in how he rules, holy in his dominion, holy in power, holy in all his ways. Even his name is holy. Hallelujah. I want to say something real quick and I really hope that this will help someone who's watching as a matter of fact I just want to invite those of you who have already joined to hit that share button by doing so you'll allow your friends and loved ones people you know as well as those you don't know to benefit from our time together fellowshipping in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth so something that I realized that I'm not liking at all these days is coming on social media. Why? Because I find that the virtual spaces have become very highly contaminated. They're very toxic, okay? And I find that now more than ever, there are quite a number of distractors but here is the thing about the distraction um, so usually as a born-again believer in Christ I just do not like follow people who are in the secular world I don't I hardly follow like people who are secular I don't so if I follow a page it has to be a page where maybe the individual is not necessarily a Christian however the kind of content that person or that page produces is something that is beneficial to all it has something to do with life tips etc right so generally speaking I do not like follow people who are in that world so here's the thing when you have a page on Facebook though other pages content even if you do not follow them they'll actually show up so although you had not gone to that page to hit follow, sometimes you just cannot avoid seeing all these different contents. But here is the thing that I'm noticing these days. It is not those other pages that the enemy is using as a distraction. Would you be surprised if I were to tell you that the distraction is coming from a lot of Christian pages Christian in quotations I find that these days you'll come on social media and a lot of the people who you might follow because uh, they had of course at some point projected their faith and you probably saw something that grabbed your attention it's almost like I don't know what is happening but there is just so much distraction going on that I feel like a lot of believers today are divulging in a lot of things that they have no business with okay so I don't know how someone can move from preaching to actually commenting on things that are happening in the entertainment industry things that are happening in the movie industry like I don't get it what is the assignment is it to preach is it to teach is it to edify or is it to be um, a vlogger or blogger so I'm a little bit confused and when you see people like 
slowly crossing boundaries or it's it's almost like you're getting a mixed thing from them it, it really is concerning uh, and it makes you want to ask yourself like how safe are you in a virtual environment where there is the likelihood that things can change and change so suddenly and in such a, a toxic way one of the things that i by the holy spirit i've been observing is gossiping a lot amongst believers and whether we want to call it so or not it is the spirit of god will not for instance and this is true even though it's an example he will not bless gossip there are a lot of content creators for instance who are on social media platforms who make their bread or their living by gossiping they gossip football players basketball players they gossip movie stars and believe it or not there are christians who actually do the very thing that i'm talking about and whether or not we want to give it some other kind of name it's gossiping okay i heard an interview with a young man the other day and he was talking about gossiping and he said if you talk about something or someone and you cannot add value to it or find a solution to whatever the problem is that you're talking about that the person or situation has it's gossiping now the dictionary on google or in your literal book dictionary says that gossiping is talking about things that cannot be proven or i, I don't know what the other word is but you'll find that this environment social media has become a place that breeds b-r-e-e-d-s breeds a lot of that and why am i saying this because there is a contamination that is happening and a lot of people are becoming mingled and trapped in it but they don't realize you see when we have ears that are not sensitive to these things we will slowly but surely begin to entertain the thing until it becomes a part of our norm and a part of our reality to the point where whereas we're supposed to be filtering out certain things we are gladly receiving it and we are gladly looking forward to it because it has now become a part of our nature now we cannot afford to allow certain things like gossip to enter our space and if we can control the kind of content the ones that we see as well as the ones that we hear that come into our space then we should try as best as possible to eliminate such things now this is why when you go on a fast the Holy Spirit this is if you were led to do so by the Holy Spirit one of the instructions the Holy Spirit might give you is turn off your social media come off Facebook for a while exit TikTok for a while deactivate your Instagram account for a while because the distractors not saying that distractors are only on the social media but in other social environments or social spheres there is the likelihood for distraction but y'all know that we have entered a time when the place where a lot of and probably most communication takes place these days is via social media people are talking to each other more virtually than they do face to face amen of course because I can connect with you through a phone call or through a video chat I'm going to make less effort to come and see you face to face at least that is the reasoning for many amen but back to the point the Holy Spirit will instruct you to hide away from certain platforms and applications why because he knows the intensity of the contamination that exists in that virtual space amen why am i even talking about this because i'm here to say to you that whether we know it or not this is one of the ways in which we defile ourselves 
by not being consecrated. Okay, what do I mean by that? Remember that gossiping, for instance. In my country, people will call it mix up. I don't know what they call it in other parts of the Caribbean, but it's same gossiping, it's same backbiting, it's tail bearing, right? Slandering and so on, and just discussing things that have nothing to do with edifying the saints. Um, when we allow those kinds of things to penetrate our minds, our spirits, our hearts, they defile us they contaminate us okay in some ways what begins to happen is we become it's like we develop a liking for it and so we want more what happens is that sometimes we too be, begin to regurgitate what we hear and so that is how defilement can come the desire starts to get developed in us we too start to find ourselves just searching out anything that has to do with such because we feel like it is entertaining and we don't realize that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, does not like such an environment because those things are abominable to him. Those things are fleshly to him. So he says, stay as far away from those things as possible. I am holy. I am holy. So if we're saying that we want to stay consecrated in the sight of the living God, we have to be very mindful of what we allow to penetrate our atmospheres. I've spoken to many individuals, for instance, who have been oppressed and are oppressed for a long while now. And of course, many of the people who have been oppressed are people who are Christians. People, you know some of you, right? Now, why is it that the enemy continues to get access to a lot of individuals? Why is it that he still gets the chance to have them in chains, to bind them, to afflict them, to hurt them, to injure them? Why? A part of the reason is this, we are not consecrated and our environment is not consecrated. As a matter of fact, if we are consecrated, okay, it'll be easier for the atmosphere in which we are to become consecrated. So we don't have consecrated atmospheres around us. We ourselves are not consecrated and then we wonder how come we have open doors. We will have open doors. Open doors do not always come through sexual sins, even though that's a major one. Open doors do not always come through pride. Open doors do not always come through someone's sexual preference that is different or contrary to the word of God. Open doors can sometimes come into our midst. We can have them by virtue of the very things that we find entertaining it can come through the contents that we expose our atmosphere to it can come through what we listen it can come through all these various things that we do not swipe past on social media and that we do not block on social media the other day i was saying to you and i've made you a promise that I want to do this by sharing this clip but I first want to get the approval from the content creator to share that part of his content but I did talk about someone who was a former gang leader who actually went to hell and he said some very powerful thing including the fact that there is a place in hell for gossipers and he says most Christians who were there were there because of gossip. So do not allow your tongue to defile you. The Bible says it's not what enters a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of him. The Bible says do not allow corrupt talk to come out of your mouth. 
But make sure that when you open up your mouth, your conversations are actually edifying those who hear you and your words are seasoned with grace. There's a lot of corrupt talk that is defiling us today as born again believers. And if we're not careful, we're actually going to keep the Holy Spirit out of our homes and included in that is our spiritual home. The only way the Spirit of the Lord can move upon us the way he wants to is if we remain in a place of holiness and consecration. And how do we become consecrated? Unlike it was for our fathers, the fathers of old, those who scripture talk about in the Old Testament, in the days of Moses, Elijah, Solomon, David, who had to participate in a ceremony that involved the killing of animals, which were called sacrifices. We do not have to do those things today, yet the sacrifice is still necessary for us to be consecrated. What is the sacrifice today as opposed to the one they had and offered? Our sacrifice is Jesus Christ. He's the one who has built that ultimate altar through which we find cleansing and purity. Amen? Are you hearing me? So the Lord requires that we continue to allow the blood of Jesus and the cross and the word of Christ to purify us and consecrate us. Because at the end of the day, even though the protocols for getting to God the Father have changed ceremonially, let us understand that God's requirement of us and his standards that have been laid out for us, they have actually not changed. They've not changed. They are the same because he is the same. Let me tell you how holy your God is. Let me use this example, for instance. The other day we were talking about Aaron, right? And his two sons who were killed suddenly by God because they offered profane fire before him. And of course, that was dishonorable to Christ, who was represented by the sacrifice that he mandated to be brought before him. It was dishonorable and disrespectful. So God was not going to stand for anything that disregarded his son who bore and continues to bear his image and the fullness of who he is and represents. So he struck them down and they died immediately. Aside from that, I want to give you another example to show you how holy your God is. In one of the conversations that the father had with Moses, when he was telling him about what to do and not to do when worshiping him through the priesthood, he said to him, when the priests come to the altar to worship me, tell them to ensure that they cover their nakedness lest their nakedness be exposed on the steps as they come. What am I saying? Your God is so holy that even at times he will say to you how you ought to attire, how you ought to be attired and how you ought to present yourself before him. If someone is truly hearing from the Spirit of God, then they will know and will admit if they're going to be honest enough 
that there are times when the Lord will tell them to dress a certain way or not to come before him a certain way. And of course, we're not talking about people who have not been taught or have not been trained. But we're talking about disciples now. People who have a relationship with him and who are in a blood covenant with him. When you get to understand what he requires, you will know that at times, although we are in a different age, his holiness remains the same. And sometimes he requires that even the very way, for instance, we are attired, be tweaked, or may I say altered, to serve a certain purpose or for a particular occasion. Have you ever had one of those moments when you were going to go th <clears throat> through the door and the Holy Spirit says, no, take that off or change that? Well, if you've never heard the Holy Spirit say to you, take out that, that earring for today or take out that nose ring for today, then I'm concerned because the God that I know, I know that I cannot present myself in the same manner for all occasions. That much I know. And I know, for instance, that when the Spirit of God wants me to minister to a certain people, a lot of things must be taken into consideration in order for me to win those people. And I know that disciples are people <clears throat> who are mature enough to understand that these instructions that the Holy Spirit gives to us are not really for us because we are already saved by his grace. But so that we can win someone else. Paul says for the Jew, for him to have won the Jews, he had to become a Jew. He said he became everything to everyone just so he could win them. But how can we know when to, where to, how to? It's if we are in that place of consecration. It's a place where we stay very far from defilement. And I'm saying to you, defilement can come even virtually. A lot of things are being normalized by your fellow Christians, your fellow brethren, men and women you know. They're helping to normalize certain things. And so we're in a time when we have to be so focused and vigilant. Now we see why Paul emphasized that we be sober and vigilant because just like that, the enemy will come in and he'll introduce us to some kind of doctrine that the Lord Jesus Christ did not give to us. And before you know it, we become lukewarm because we break down our standards. In fact, his standards and we start to normalize what I want to call the substitutions. Amen. If the Lord says that in order for you to win the warfare, you must be consecrated. By being consecrated, you will keep out witchcraft. I'm not asking you. When you're in a place of consecration, you'll help to keep away witchcraft from your life. You'll help to keep away voodoo. You'll help to keep away all of these darts that are coming from evil practices and practitioners who have raised up all of these high places against you. 
when you are consecrated and your atmosphere in consecrated, I'm telling you, certain things will not be able to penetrate you. But I cannot remain consecrated when I allow so much of curse words to be played in my atmosphere or so much of gossip to be played in my room and my space where I even pray, I cannot remain consecrated when I continue to listen to people discussing people's business and doing and saying all manner of things. I can't. cannot remain at a place of consecration when I find as entertaining videos of people mocking people and of people criticizing them because maybe they have a disability or maybe they don't think whoever is criticizing now they don't think that person is attractive and so they're gonna laugh at the person's nose laugh at the person's big ears laugh at the person's big eyes and these are the kinds of contents that have become viral and we mock God's creation and then we say that we are consecrated and then we're wondering how come certain things have entered our space. Do you understand family? We got to be very vigilant because a lot of things are becoming normalized before us by the minute, by the second. And unless we are in that place of consecration and repentance, we won't detect contamination when it comes perversion when it comes infiltration through lust and videos that promote lusts pornography and videos that promote pornography sexual immorality and videos that promote it Gossip, lies, the spirit of gossip always walks with the spirit of lies. They're sisters. They're like twin. Wherever you find a gossiper, you find a liar. If the spirit of gossip is in a person, the spirit of lies in them. And these things, I'm saying they defile us. They make our spiritual atmosphere very filthy, very dirty. Stay far. Stay far from anything that is likely to contaminate you. Are you hearing me? Remove any content from your feed that is not edifying you and any content that is promoting something that you know is going to raise up the wrong kind of spirit in you. Let us pray.
Hi Terence, what would you like me to say? You want scriptures? Okay, let me give you some scriptures. I believe I want to start in Proverbs, Terence. Before I pray, someone asked for some scriptures, and it's my delight to give them scriptures. Proverbs 20 verse 19 is one of my favorites. He who goes about as a slanderer or a gossiper reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a gossiper. I want to go to Paul, the apostle. Ephesians 4, starting from 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's Ephesians 4, 29 to 32. Colossians 4 verse 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Let's go to another scripture. Matthew chapter 15. It is not what goes into the mouth of a man that makes him unclean and defiled, but what comes out of the mouth, this makes a man unclean and defiles him. Um, our brother who had asked for scriptures, do you want more? Let me know. just waiting on his reply in the meantime Colossians 3 5 to 8 put to death therefore what is earthly in you sexual immorality impurity passion evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry on account of these the wrath of God is coming in these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. All right, so let's go. Let us go into a time of prayer, family, as we ask the Lord to help us to remain holy and consecrated in a time when it's becoming more and more difficult it's more and more difficult for all of us i'm telling you okay if all around us is defilement 
contamination, filthiness. If the filthiness is increasing around us, wouldn't you agree that it's becoming more and more difficult for the people of God to stay in that place of consecration? Wouldn't you agree? Let's be real. Hello. Hello. It's like, for instance, if you are around a lot of people who love to gossip and slander, do you not know that it's going to become more and more difficult for you to pray around such people? If you are constantly around people who love those things, they probably live in your house or you work alongside them. So every day on the job, these people are always chatting someone. Them chat the boss, them chat the supervisor. They're discussing everybody in the workplace. Did you know that if you're not careful, this activity will have an impact on your prayer life? Are you hearing me? Can we just be real and honest now? That your physical environment can actually severely impact your spiritual life. And that is why we are saying, God, we need your help. We need your intervention because we are reminded that you are still holy. But Satan is making it increasingly difficult for us today. As he intensifies the push of his end time agenda, it is becoming more difficult for the saints, for them to be consecrated. Yet consecration is still required. And I believe that it's because the Lord Jesus knows how difficult it would become in the last days that he said he would shorten the time of the very elect. Are you hearing me? Someone is asking how to contact me on YouTube. The WhatsApp number through which you may make your communication is plus one eight seven six three one nine five one six three. Plus one eight seven six three one nine five one six three. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. I really hope the individual who had asked for scriptures is satisfied. If not, we can give you some more, but we're going to go on to a time of prayer. Let us step forward, everyone, all hands raised even now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once you're standing with me, just type standing in the comments and I'm hoping that you'll not be lying. You'll actually be standing indeed. Just type standing in the comments. Father, I thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Nicole says, even fasting is becoming hard these days. Yes, it's getting harder for people to fast. It's the truth. Because there are so many distractors around us, slash contaminants around us, so let's be honest with ourselves. It's getting more and more difficult to do even fasting. Mm -hmm. It is. And again, as I said earlier, the people, the enemy is using a lot to distract us are people who are supposed to be like us. That's the scary part. Because truth is, we don't go into certain environments to meddle with people who are unbelievers to begin with, some of us. So therefore, they're not a threat. Okay? We meddle with born-again believers like ourselves. And so in a lot of instances when there is contamination or an increase of distractors around us, it's born-again believers who the enemy unfortunately has been using to breed the distractors because they're still worldly, still fleshly, still love 
gossip, still love slanderings, still love rumor mongerings, still love backbitings, still love all those things that do not edify. And so when you go through these pages, for instance, on social media, you'll wonder if you're on the page of a child of God or if you're on the page of a vlogger. The latest news in Nollywood is on their page. The latest news in Hollywood is on their page. The latest news about this woman and that man and this actor and that singer and that rapper is on their page. And here's the, 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 the thing that is disturbing. The individual who is sharing the content clearly is not contributing by adding some kind of value or by suggesting a solution to the problem. And this is how you know gossipers. They love what they do as well. And I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, stay far away from these things and these people and these pages because there is a place specially made in hell for gossipers. Are you hearing me, family? Let us remember at all time. It's not what goes in. It's not the food that we eat that makes us unclean. It's what comes out of our mouths. And if we don't shut something down, clearly we are in agreement with it. And if we agree with Satan then of course you'll walk with Satan. And if you're with Satan, then you're an enemy to God. And if you are his enemy, as we have said in the sermon the other day, the hand of Jehovah is going to be against you. And that is what a lot of people are already calling witchcraft. Christians who should know better, who refuse to do better, the hand of God is against them because of a lot of things that they refuse to walk away from and shut down in their lives. And they say someone has sent witchcraft. No, it's not witchcraft. Nobody has sent you any witchcraft. Nobody has sent any voodoo to you. Nobody is trying to do any evil to you. You have brought your own evil upon yourself. The hand of God is against you because you are now a co-signage to evil. You have signed off of, on an affidavit to do evil with the enemy. You are now in allegiance with the enemy. You are now a part of a coup that is going up against God's children and what God stands for. So how can you be for God? You are now his enemy. So a lot of times when people say, oh, I just met in an accident. Is what kind of crosses? No, it's not crosses. Sometimes it's the hand of God that is against individuals because they refuse to move away from them fleshly things and start edifying the people around them. Are you hearing me, family? And of course, we will not get everything right all the time. We will not be right all the time. But you know someone has iniquity in them when they perpetually walk in their evil ways. And no matter how much they're guided through the word of God, they would never turn. In fact, there are people who, I'm telling you, they will never even position themselves to hear the true word of God. Because they know the word of God will convict them of their wrongs. They know the word of God will challenge them to do better and to sometimes delete all the foolishness that they have. That, as I said, as long as they remain there for many, a lot of those things will become witnesses. Can you imagine our own doings become a witness against us in judgment? Our own writings witnessing against us? Can you imagine your own post witnessing against you? The thing you share witnessing against you? 
I believe it's time we start going through some of the things that we have shared, contents we have shared in our phones and on our social media platforms. Do they really edify? Do they build up? I've recently fallen in love with a, a particular scripture. It's very short. It says pride. In fact, not pride. It says knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Please type that in the comments. Knowledge puffs up. When people feel like they've been in the faith for 20 years, how dare a younger woman claim that she's a child, she's talking to me. You can't correct me. I'm an older person than you. I'm 40, I'm 50, I'm 60, and I have a church for 40 years now. How dare you tell me? That so-called knowledge, which is really arrogance, it puffs up. But the Bible says love builds up. Please put that in the comments for me quickly. Hallelujah. And it's scriptural to our brother who was asking for scripture. Would you like us to tell you which scripture that is? Hallelujah. I'll give it to you. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 1. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 1. Hallelujah. Let me see those of you who are standing. We're going to be praying right now. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says, let your light so shine before men. Let your light shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. As I said, you will not always get it right. That's why we are now under the dispensation of grace. Grace has made room for your error. But as Paul says, just because there is grace, does that mean we should continue in perpetual sins? God forbid, no. No. And there are a lot of people who are quick to point out another brother's issues another sister's issues and they refuse to see themselves they refuse to hear themselves they refuse to assess themselves wanting to pluck out a beam out of someone else's eyes but refuse to take out the big plank that's in theirs so that they can see the beam clearly Hallelujah. Your father requires that you come to him consecrated. Your father is holy. And there is a command for you to be holy. Your God has always been this way. He never changed. People make it seem like he's a swagging God now, like he has a swag. No, he does not have a swag. And no, he's not dope. Do you know what dope even means? Where did these people get these descriptions of our holy God from? <laughs> oh my God, let me read out the meaning of dope for you. First of all, when you look at the word dope, the first definition that comes up says an illegal drug. We 
have all these worldly words that we're using as descriptions because we just don't mind if God could just be like us it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen every day I should in right I beg him for mercy because I know how holy he is and I know how strict he can be. Let me tell you, he has the nicest personality, very humorous, for sure. He's very friendly at times, but there are times when he's very stern. I have to ask God for mercy every single day. And as often as possible, I reflect on my salvation and my spirit. And I have to always say to myself, this is just me. This is how I do my self-check. Like, if something were to happen to me, no. Am I in good standing with Jehovah? I want to make sure that I will not go to the place of eternal torment where I can no longer die again because I would have already passed death into life now. The realm where everything is now alive. Everybody is living there now. I have to assess me okay and because I know how holy he is every day I have to ask God for mercy every day every day I have to beg him for pardon every day before I ask him for anything too in prayer I check myself And I ask him to forgive me of my trespasses, which are so many every day. Daily, you know. Daily. Daily. See, when you understand the holiness of God, you'll see how often you mess up before him. When you understand how pure your God is and how sacred his presence is that we need to survive. It makes you more and more aware of filth in your life and in your environment. Did you know that even your thoughts are projected like words? Your thoughts have a personality in the realm of the spirit. That's why the Lord Jesus says, if you see the person and you start thinking in a lustful way toward the person, you've already committed the act. Your thoughts take on a personality in the realm of the spirit. Even something that goes through your mind can defile you. When people tick you off and in your heart you're like, I, I wish I could just do so and so. And you know the Lord says, love them, pray for them. You've sinned. When you go to him, are you not going to admit that you sinned a few minutes ago? Do we still have believers going into the presence of God saying to him, Lord, I have not sinned? You're lying to yourself if you are such a person. Your sin might not be the same as someone else's, but living in this filthy world in which we are and living around filthy people every day, It increases the pressures of sinning. That's why Isaiah, as chosen as he was, as ordained as he was, as a prophet of the living God, he said unto God, he said, Lord, I am filthy. My lips are unclean and I live amongst an unclean people. Are you hearing me, family? Hello? If Isaiah could say it, someone who was used so mightily, what say you and I?
I really hope not, Sister Marcia. But I'll tell you the truth. I've come across quite a few who have actually said they have done nothing wrong. So they, they don't need to repent. They're Christians. They've never done, they, they've not done anything that is wrong. They get up, they read, I read my Bible, I pray. I do my fasting every now and then. I try my best. Yes, you try your best. But. What about the promises you did not fulfill? What about telling your sister that you can't help her or that you don't have the money to help her when truth be told, you do have the money in the bank, but you just refuse to go there, you lie. What about saying to someone who's poor and needy, come back when you actually have the thing in your possession, you're going to tell them to come back and check you when you have it now. The Lord says that's a sin. What about smiling with someone, yet in your heart, you're criticizing the person and you're thinking the worst of the person. You're telling the person congratulations, but in your heart, you wish the person never got through so soon. I'm here to tell you that some of those congratulatory messages that you have received under your posts, they're not genuine. Some of those congratulatory messages you've gotten through your Instagram and through your WhatsApp messaging, they were never sincere. I'm telling you that. People can say anything. But if you were to get a glance of what goes on in their hearts when they say what they say, some of you would literally vomit. Raise your hands, family. You're welcome to follow. As I pray, you may pray along or pray according to the manner in which I'm praying. Or if you want to pray your own prayer as you're led, fine. Okay? Anyway, whichever way you choose. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Jehovah. The creator of the universe. The creator of all things. The God of the first Adam and the second Adam. The God who made Adam out of the dust. The God who caused a deep sleep to fall upon him during which time he breathed into him the breath of life. Kashatai. The man who took out of Adam a rib. And made Eve. Presenting her to him. So that he could say this is bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. The eternal father, the ancient of days. Who found Noah as a righteous man who lived amongst filthy people in his day. The God who smelled the offering and said in his heart, I will no more cause the flood to destroy the whole earth. And who made an eternal covenant with mankind in the form of a rainbow. You are so holy. You're so protected. 
irrespective of your reputation and integrity, God, that you say, you know what? Just so that I don't become angry to the point where I have a change of heart. I'm going to set before me a perpetual reminder in the form of a rainbow. Hallelujah. The rainbow is yours. The rainbow is yours. The rainbow is yours, Jehovah. It belongs to you. It's your idea. It's your creation. It's your invention. The rainbow belongs to you. Jehovah. Even sacredness is associated with the rainbow. Come to think of it, Lord. The rainbow is sacred. The rainbow was formed out of your imagination, your desire. John the Revelator says that when he went to heaven, he saw one seated on a throne and around the throne he said he saw the rainbow. Oh, glory to your name, spirit of the living God. Ekata mili shata. Hallelujah. Yokoseke. The angels bow before you. And they cry, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come holy holy the elders cry holy the elders cast their crowns at your feet they cry holy 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 You said, do not harm the little children because their angels stand in my presence. The seraphims are before you. with six wings and with twain they cover their faces because of your holiness Lord the cherubims are there surrounding your throne Jehovah you are holy Jehovah you are holy Oh, Jehovah, you just need to think it and it shall come to pass. Jehovah, you don't even need to say it, Jehovah. Who is like you, Jehovah? Heaven is your throne. The earth is your footstool. You are clothed in majesty. You are clothed in splendor. You are clothed with glory. You are clothed with power. You are clothed with purity. You are clothed, God, with all righteousness and judgments. Jehovah. Jehovah. Jehovah, we're not even worthy to talk to you. Jehovah, what is 
man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that you should consider him Jehovah the only way we can come to you today Lord is because of Jesus Christ who has been exalted by you to be seated at your own right hand you've given all authority to him you've placed all things under his feet you've also placed judgment in his hands and he bears the scars he has the wounded scars the wounded hands that are healed but he still bears the mark he bears the mark in his feet he bears the mark in his side Jehovah 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 oh father father we give you glory Father, we give you honor. Majestic God. Triune God. Set apart, holy God. Scarce God. Everywhere present, but is still so hard to reach in terms of God getting you to show up with your face yes you do hear us Lord but we have to seek your face God God all other gods they were made from men and by men. They can neither see nor hear nor understand. You are the only true and living God. El Shaddai is your name. You are the almighty God. You are El Elyon, the most high God. You are El Gibor, the man of war. You are Jehovah Sitkanu, the God of our righteousness. You are El Rowi. You are our shepherd. You are Jehovah Jireh. Our our provider you are Jehovah Shalom our peace giver you are Jehovah Shama our God who is always there you are you are you are our covenant keeping God our covenant keeping God you are Who am I before you? 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 My faith wavers at times. It goes up, it goes down. What would I have said, Lord, if I were to be put in the position of those who were martyred for the name of Jesus Christ? Lord, I do not covet their positions, Lord, because I don't know, I'm not confident that if I were put to the test, that I would have passed the test like they have. Fickle, fickle, full of unbelief at times, inconsistent at times. just allow us 
to stand before your throne for a moment. If you would just allow us, Lord, to remind you of how holy you are. If you would just allow us, Lord, to recognize how sacred you are and that all things come from you. Jehovah, we're saying to you, Lord, that it has become increasingly difficult for your people to be separated for your people to live up to the word that says that although we are in the world we are not of it father we need deliverance lord deliver us lord god from the defilements in our midst deliver us lord god from gossipers, deliver us from backbiters, deliver us from rumor mongers and war mongers, deliver us, Lord God Almighty, from tail bearers, deliver us, mighty God, from liars, deliver us, Jesus, from scornful men, puffed up men, deliver us, Father. Cleanse our ears, God. Cleanse our ears, Lord. Katania na na ne koto, iaku sheke le koshoto manda katusha na yerviata kianosha makushketo rokushe na na likandi kashoto karubu kutu ramandi kata. Oh, Father, remove from our eyes any covering that was placed there to blur our visions. Karoshete, mendo seke, yeradadando koto. Let every veil, let koshoto, manda, be torn, nakushata, be removed, kati, zekiendo koshoto, be peeled away, le kantata, mandi, kada, yero koshonde. Jehovah, look at our mouths, look at our tongues. The Bible says that the tongue is so powerful it can set a whole forest ablaze. This weapon right here, that is used to destroy, this weapon right here, that has been misused in the name of Jesus Father we ask that you purify the tongue scrape the tongue brush the tongue for us spiritually Jehovah brush it Lord Brush it, Lord, it all shit, it end up with the blood of Jesus. Ikariande, Kanamanta. We want a spiritual bath, but not the kind of bath that the witches give, not the kind of bath that the warlocks give, not the kind of bath that the wizards offer, not the kind of bath that we have to pay for, but the bath that freely is given to us through the blood of Jesus. Bathe us even now, Lord. I want a brushing of teeth in the spirit. I want a mouthwash, a mouthwashing in the spirit. What's on my hands, Lord? 
what's on our hands. Because any handware that you never placed there, any handware that you see that you do not recognize, we give you permission to remove such things and to cast them into fire even now, Lord. Rotonanoshe. Yes, whatever has made our hands sticky, katananande. Anything that has made our hands dirty, kando shato sekan tatamando shanana kantush kataya, rip them off, nekoto, and cast those costumes into the fire. Shendo kutu. Reprende prede koto. What costumes do you see on us, Jehovah? How are we dressed in front of you? What kind of garments do you see on us, Jehovah? If you do not recognize these garments because you never gave them to us, we ask that you rip them off. Begin to command your angel, even like you commanded that angel in Zechariah 3. Lord, command your angel to remove filthy garments and to put on fresh garments on us in the spirit, Lord. Garments that make us love to criticize others. Garments of lies. Garments of falsehood. Garments of hypocrisy. Garments of pretense. Garments of evil speaking. Garments of hatred. Garments of resentment. Garments of unforgiveness. Garments of malice. Garments of spite. Garments of emulations. Garments, Lord. That you do not recognize. Take them off. Take them off. Rip them off. Rip them off. Hey. Hey. Recognize, Lord. Remove strife from our midst. Remove ungratefulness from our midst. Remove murmurings and complaints from our midst. Remove bitterness from our midst, Lord. Remove perversions of all sorts. Remove lust. Remove, oh God, all manner of things and concupiscence from our lives right now, God. We're going to Florida, Lord, on the 27th of April. We're going to be gathered at the Hilton Hotel 
and you know all the people you are going to be pulling to the Hilton Hotel. Lord, I, Shadina Anglin, your servant, I stand in the gap for every man and every woman that will enter that environment and every child that shall come into that place on the 27th of April in West Palm Beach. Spirit of the living God, I stand as an intercessor. I stand in the office of a simple priest and I say, Lord, forgive us of our trespasses, cleanse us of our iniquities, pardon of us of our transgressions, mighty God, pardon us, Lord Jesus, of even presumptuous sins committed before you. Lord, wash us and cleanse us, Father. Purify us even now, Father. Give us that bath we asked for earlier, Father. Those of us who will be gathered at the Hilton Hotel. Oh, Bahaya. Hekariamande. Repradiande. Repradiande. You said because you have set your love upon me. I will answer you and I will deliver you. I will honor you. Hallelujah. And I will show you my salvation. If you can't do it, it cannot be done. If you cannot do it, it cannot be done. I don't know. If your hands can't do it, it cannot be done. If your word can't do it, it cannot be done. If your spirit cannot do it, it cannot be done. gotta cleanse us that's all we want that's all we want cleanse us that's all we want that's all we want right now we don't care who loves us or likes us we don't care to please man because man will always have something to say. We care zero about how man feels about us. We are God pleasers, not man pleasers. We care zero about how man feels about us. And what man thinks is right in their sight. We live to please you. We live to honor you. We live to be corrected and taught according to your word. Not man's feelings, not man's emotions, not man's opinions, not man's preferences or choices, but what you say for us, Lord God. Father, all we want, all we want is for you to purify us because there's a lot of filth around us. There's a lot of toxicity around us. There's a lot of stench around us. Lots of filth coming out of the mouth of those who should be teaching your word and who should be willing, winning souls for you. They become perverted. They become gossipers, many. They become tale bearers. 
they've lost their way. So who will teach us? Who will teach us, Lord? And if you do not deliver us quickly, Father, then we're afraid that we too will become contaminated. Father, you know what is needed, Lord. Your wisdom is higher than ours. Your knowledge is way higher than ours. We need help. We need help to survive. We need help. Help from on high. Because everywhere just seems so dark, so dark, so dark, Lord, so dark, so dark, so filthy, so dark, so messy, Lord. Our spirits have an earnest desire to exit this physical body, to exit this temporary body and to enter the home that you have prepared for us. Lord, we are crying with birth pains. We cry. We yearn in the spirit to come out of this so we can be separated from the filth. It's hard, Lord. It's really hard. It's hard for us. So we need your help to stay separated. We need your help. If we're going to be preserved, help us, Lord, even more. Help us and show us how to shut out some things. Give us the strength to delete applications, apps, even game apps. Apps that are major distractors. Give us the strength, Jehovah, to deactivate profile or profiles on the various platforms just to give you some time, oh God. Help us, Lord, to refocus those of us who have lost focus. Those who have lost their discipline, their love for you. Give them the strategy, Lord. Give us strategies. Raise your hands and say, give me strategies, Lord. Come on, tell him to give you strategies. You need strategies to survive. You need them. You need them to navigate the times that are ahead. Strategies, Lord, release them unto us. Deposit them into our hearts. Deposit them into our minds. The strategy to win and to overcome the myriad obstacles that the deceiver has put in front of us that we don't see are actually obstacles because they're being presented to us like cakes they're being presented to us like a fine meal with some of our favorites they don't look like obstacles Lord the deceiver has put the obstacles in our way in such a way that it seems delectable, appealing, desirous, Lord. And that's why so many have already fallen into the trap because it was presented in a way that hid its true nature and its true intent. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. 
Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Come on, open your mouth and say, Deliver me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. Some of you, you go to work and you're next to people who are gossipers. You're next to people who are slanderers. You sit and work amongst people who every single day, they release curse words in your ears. You're driving and it's curse words. Everywhere you go, it's like there is pollution. Come on, ask God to deliver you. It's so hard to enjoy, Lord, a content that does not have expletives. It's so hard to, to find something that is not having so many things that are unclean. It's hard. I'm telling you, Jehovah. We don't want to miss our way. We don't want to go to that place of weeping and regrets. I'd rather lose everything, Lord, and make it in. If there's something that I have that you want from me, you know, Lord, we want to make it in. We want to be accepted at the gate. We don't want to be told that we cannot enter. We don't want to be told that the king does not know us. We don't want to be told, Lord. Depart from me. We don't. So help us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Help us and deliver us. Because we want to make it. We want to make it. Help us to love what you love and hate what you hate. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us to assess ourselves daily. Help us to check us daily help us to introspect daily help us Lord help us I thank you Lord for this moment of prayer and I thank you that even though the enemy has sought to suppress Contents on this page because that's his motive. He has spread and has made available all things that promulgate unrighteousness and everything that is contrary to who you are. But many servants like myself are being targeted by the satanic kingdom as he seeks to suppress contents that we put out. So Father, I just want to tell you thanks that in spite of what he's doing, you continue to multiply. And I don't know how you do it, but you still get your word out. You still get your things sent to your people. So I just want to give you thanks. Because you always know how to find a way out. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you always know how to and when to raise up a standard. You are brilliant. You're the most brilliant person I know. You're the most intelligent person I know. I love you. 
I love you with all of my heart, with all of my mind, and with all of my strength. I love you, my Father. I thank you for your people. I bless them today. I pray you will touch their hearts, those who have not yet accepted Christ Jesus, who has made this fellowship possible. I pray you will touch their hearts and you will give them the invitation to receive you because I know that if you do not draw them to you, they cannot come. So please, in the same way that you started to pull me and others, begin to pull them to Jehovah. Father, I do not care what anyone or people have to say. I just love you. I love you. And so God forbid if I should ever be praying one day, Lord, and my clothes tears and there's a tear somewhere that I don't even recognize. Father, it really would not matter. Because we continue to major in the minor and we use every negative thing as entertainment. I'm here to tell you the greatest thing that I've had and still have is you. Nothing else matters. Nothing. Nothing, Lord. We thank you for our families. We thank you for every help you have given to us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Looks like I'm really getting better at praying like this with my eyes closed. I want to tell you how far I'm coming from. Ooh, so they said my life is disconnected, discontinued on TikTok. Why did they discontinue my life? What did I mention? Let me see, Lord. Oh, I think I know what I mentioned. You just told it to me, Holy Ghost. You said I said the rainbow. Lord, I did not even call the name. Yet they ended my life while my eyes were closed. But you know what, Jehovah? To you be all the glory. Let them continue to disconnect their apps because their apps are not. You're still doing what you ought to do. You're still being glorified. The rainbow belongs to you and I will repeat it 10 more times. The rainbow belongs to you. So family, uh, we're in 2024. <laughs> seven years ago or eight years ago when I would stand and pray like see it's because of like the streaming I've had to train myself to like just stand at one place because if you ask people who know me from six years ago or so like whenever I'm praying I would start in one position and when I open my eyes, I would end up in a whole different position. Sometimes I would start facing this direction. And when I open my eyes, I'm looking the other way. And I, I would have shifted either to the left or to the right. And I would be like, how did I even get here? And so I'm getting really better. I'm actually in the same position, family, in which I had started. So please remember to take down the... <laughs> Zandre, you love love. Take down the address of the West Palm Beach location for the Florida encounter coming up on the 27th of April. It's 150 Australian Avenue, West Palm Beach, Florida. The Lord has an appointment with you and your family. You're not going to come alone. Please make sure you don't walk through those doors alone. Take a friend with you. Take a sister with you. Some of you should be taking people from Jamaica to come there. I'm expecting to see someone fly from Trinidad to be there. Okay? Some of you, you need to get your tickets because you need to be there in Florida. Okay? Okay, ma'am? Okay, okay, sir. Hello. 
Now, plus one eight seven six three one nine five one six three is the WhatsApp number for the ministry. You may send your inquiries there. And if you want to ask any questions, you're welcome to ask via the WhatsApp number. Remember, the website is found at shadeenanglin.org. And if you want to make any kind of donation to support the encounters or any venture that the Lord is doing through the ministry, you may always go to Shadeen Anglin. That's S H A D E E. N A N G L I N dot O R G forward slash donate. On that note, please remember I don't have an orphanage, I do not live in Nigeria. I am a Jamaican, and so you might hear me use the area code 876. You will not hear me mention any other area code because I do not live anywhere else. Like in Nigeria, I love our Nigerian brothers and sisters who often join us, but I do not live there. I do not have an orphanage. Do not allow them to scam you through my name on TikTok, nor on Instagram, nor on Facebook, nor on YouTube. Please, I'm begging you to be on the lookout. I'm not prophesying lies to people. I'm not telling you that I see something in your life. I'm not telling you that something is wrong and you need to send me some money in order for me to pray for you. I'm not telling you that. Look out for these fraudsters who are posing in my name. I love you everyone. Remember to turn on your notifications so that you will always be notified of live broadcasts. I should be live tomorrow at 8 o'clock New York time. I should be. Okay? I might not be, but I probably will be. Anyhow, I love you. Bye-bye.